beautiful people and welcome back to Wine Chat. My name is Emma and I'm a certified sommelier with a mission to spread wine knowledge and to help you drink better. Today we are chatting about one of the biggest trends in the wine industry over the past couple of years. I am of course talking about orange wine. Let's chat about it. Orange wine is not a wine that is made from oranges. It's not a mimosa style glass of wine, nor am I talking about the wine that comes from the orange region in New South Wales, Australia. I am talking about the white wine that is made with skin contact and it produces a beautiful orange color style of wine. You may also know orange wine as a skin contact wine, a skin fermentation wine, or an amber wine. But regardless of the name, it's delicious all the same. In traditional white wine making, the juice is pressed out of the skins and transferred immediately to a fermentation vessel. However, in red wine making, the skins, seeds and juice all get fermented together. In orange wine making, it's very similar to the style of red wine making. However, producers will choose to leave the juice on the skins of the white grapes for a few days or even up to a few months. The longer that the juice stays in contact with the skins and seeds, the more flavor, color, and tannin gets extracted. Leaving the white wine in contact with the skins and seeds for just a few hours or a few days will give the wine just a little bit of complexity, a touch of body, and a beautiful golden color. However, if a producer chooses to leave it for months and months, it's gonna give the wine a crunchy texture, a lot more body, a tannin structure, and a beautiful amber color. <laughs> Now, orange wines are nothing new. If anything, they are one of the original styles of winemaking. They can be traced back over 5,000 years ago to Georgia, where they would ferment the grapes, skins, seeds, juice, and all in large amphorae vessels called quervi, which would be sealed with beeswax and buried upright in the ground. Orange wines also have a very long history in places like Slovenia and Frulli Venezia Giulia in Italy, where skin contact white wines were really popular up until the late 1950s, 1960s, which is when a fresher, cleaner style of white wine started to become more popular. With the resurgence of consumers caring about natural and sustainable winemaking, Orange wine has had a really large boost over the past couple of years. This is because most producers of orange wine work in a very natural way and a lot of them are organic or biodynamic certified, just like the bottle I am drinking here. You can see the little biodynamic certification right there. So what does orange wine really taste like? Well, it depends on the grape that has been used and how long the juice has been in contact with the skins for. However, flavors can range from apricots to nectarines, a little bit of quince, some bruised apple, uh, dried citrus peel, some savory spices, sourdough, a bit of nuttiness with some hazelnut or Brazil nut, and even a little bit of sweet florality on the nose, which is actually completely dry on the palate. <laughs> So what do you pair orange wine with? Well, it pairs really well with food with really bold flavors. For this reason, it works perfectly with curry or with really spicy dishes. It's also fantastic with a lot of cheeses. And if you want something a little bit different to pair with your meat, orange wine is a perfect example. It has a body and a tannin structure that can often hold up to a lot of meat dishes. There is a huge variety in styles of orange wine and it really differs from producer to producer. So if you have tried one before and you weren't a fan, don't write off the entire category. I know myself the first couple of times that I tried an orange wine, I didn't get it. I couldn't see what the fuss was about, but now I've really been introduced to some fantastic producers, which I will link their websites in the description below. And these orange wines have really changed my mind on the entire category. 
It's important to remember that there are orange wines made from every single white grape variety and in pretty much every single corner of the world nowadays. If you haven't been such a fan of orange wine before, I would recommend heading along to any of the natural wine bars that seem to be popping up all over the world. Here in London, we are really lucky. We have an amazing selection. Places like Top Cuvée, Laughing Heart, Sager and Wild, Naughty Piglets, Sof, Terroir, just to name a few. Head along and try them out by the glass. And this way you really get to see kind of what color of orange wine you like, what grape, and from what country and what producers you enjoy. This way you can kind of dip your toes in without having to invest in an entire bottle first. In terms of serving an orange wine, you'll need to treat it a little bit differently to how you treat your normal white wines. In terms of temperature, it needs to be just a few degrees cooler than room temperature. If it's too cold, you won't have any flavors. And if it's too warm, it will just taste a little bit like a dead wine. So leaving it maybe just on top of the ice rather than submerging it all the way in is a good idea. However, do play around with it as different orange wines do react differently to the cold. I would always recommend decanting your orange wine. This is because the decantation really helps to open the wine up and let all the aromas become really expressive and it will make for a much more enjoyable drinking experience. Well team, that is all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video on orange wines. Give it a like if you have enjoyed it and remember to share it around. Subscribe for more upcoming wine education and until next time, remember, drink better, be better.